Yeah, so today we'll be looking at uh, how you can contribute to our community history pages and how uh, you can uh, carry out some research. OK, so Catherine, do we already have um, members of the public contributing to our pages? We certainly do. We just don't have the capacity in house to produce many com community history pages, although I have to say that one minor benefit of lockdown is that while we've been working from home, some staff have been able to add to the project. Um, for instance, we've added pages for Master Mortain in Arlington during the lockdown. We ran a campaign to encourage volunteers to participate, and they've been contributing pages on communities including Carlton, Chellington, Little Stoughton, Cranfield and Ravenston. You can see um, a page that was written by Pamela Hyder, one of our regular volunteers, about the Fox Public House in Carlton. And you can see she's got quite a detailed history. Um, we've got an assault on a constable at the Fox in 1834, 1835 rather. Um, information from the newspaper in the 1890s and a section on the later history. So quite a comprehensive history mm. of that pub. And uh, so, yes, um, we do already have people contributing and it's been a very valuable help to us. Brilliant. And do people have to be experienced researchers to take part? No, definitely not. In fact, it's an ideal way to learn how to tackle the local history project um, with support from experienced archive staff while you do it. So absolutely anyone is welcome to help. Okay. And what resources uh, do we have available to help people get started? Um, we have various guidelines that we compiled back in 2018. Um, here is one for the introductory section. You can see we've, um, we, we explain what we normally include. Um, for example, occasionally we do notable crimes in the introduction. Um, how to compile the information for our page on the community in general that we always start each section with, um, where the information is available, links to various websites, how to access maps, um, how to access historical information and information about crime. So it gives you lots of different resources that you can draw on to compile your pages. And then we have additional guidelines for the different sections on the church, education, interesting buildings and so on. Great. And can you give uh, an example of how to research a page? Yes, certainly. Um, we would normally start with the archives catalogue. This is a very valuable resource. It will allow you to track down what items we actually hold that relate to a particular property or topic. And Helen will be putting out some videos next week explaining how to get the most out of our catalogue. I'll give an example of a particular paper I researched recently, which was on the War Memorial at Harlington. I'm not going to show you how to do the catalogue search, as I say, that will come up in next week's videos. But I searched here for a combination of Harlington and War Memorial. And you can see it's given me 19 results. Um, I would then go through those to see what we have. So, for example, here, PC Harlington will be the parish council at Harlington, um, a section on the War Memorial. So if I expand that, you can see here, if I expand our hierarchy for browser, that will tell us what we have in this section. Uh, we have correspondence regarding the War Memorial and its cleaning and maintenance. Um, now, that's likely to give information that's more detailed than we'd really want to include in a community history page. But it could be useful if someone needs to find out how the War Memorial has been maintained. So I'll just include that in the page as a reference rather than actually going and looking at the information. But there were some papers belonging to the vicar of Harlington, talking about the War Memorial. If I'd been able to go into the archives, which at the moment I can't do, um, I would have looked at those 
because I expect that that would probably tell me about how the more, more memorial was built and its cost and so on. As I can't look directly at the document at the moment, again, I've just included the reference as a point of further research. Um, further down the catalogue page, there were references to a number of photographs and postcards showing the War Memorial. Um, I'd read through the descriptions, found a couple that I thought would illustrate the page nicely, and then asked a colleague who is in the office at the moment to send me a copy of the images. If we look at the page that I compiled, you can see here there's an image of the War Memorial soon after it was built, um, and another here showing the dedication of the War Memorial on the 9th of May in 1920. Once I'd been through all the catalogue information, my next port of call was to the British Newspaper Archive website, which is a very, very useful resource. We do have many of the original papers for Bedfordshire in the archive. Sometimes they're microfilmed to save the newsprint, which is very fragile, but the British newspaper archive can be searched in a way that obviously you can't with a physical paper or a microfilm. Um, it is a subscription service, but it can be accessed freely at the archives. And here I searched for the Harlington War Memorial. I then narrowed it down to papers from Bedfordshire and to the date May 1920. And I found this entry which is, you, know, you see Harlington Memorial unveiled. The unveiling of the War Memorial took place on Sunday afternoon, Toddington Brass Band being in attendance and so on. And because it's out of copyright and not ridiculously long, I actually transcribed that article and added it to my page. Then finally, I did another search of our catalogue, this time, I searched for Harlington and the First World War. And looking at that, I found this item, the Great War, 1914 to 1919, Men of Harlington, Bedfordshire, containing biographical notes and photographs. I thought that sounded very interesting. So again, I um, asked for some images of that document to see whether it would be worth using on the website and found that the details were quite interesting for the various men from Harlington who had been killed in the war. And I decided in the end to actually set that up as a separate page. So I've put a link at the bottom of my more, more memorial page here. And you can see I, I selected five individuals, put in the photographs and the transcript of the information from the booklet feeling that that would give a good pointer for further research and a good taster for what's in the booklet without being overwhelming, either to make a ridiculously long page. And obviously we don't have time to simply transcribe every document. So a selection gives a lovely taster. And so hopefully the final War Memorial page gives a good balance between giving a selection of interesting information so the location of the War Memorial, how many names are on it, the information about the unveiling, the old photographs, um, the link to the memorial booklet, and then a little list of further resources that we have in the archives. Um, and hopefully the end page isn't overwhelming to read mm -hmm. and neither was it overwhelming to research. It should, shouldn't, it, 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 we're not expecting somebody to say the last word on a particular subject, you know, there's always going to be more information that we have to leave out or it becomes an entire thesis. Really. Yeah, OK. And uh, what do people need to do if they want to get involved? Well, if you'd like to get involved, um, please get in touch with us by email, which is archive at bedford.gov.uk. Normally, we would want to invite people into the archives so that we can get to know them and they can get to know us and that we can point them at particular documents. But obviously at the moment, that isn't easy. At the time that we're recording this video, um, we're just about to close for a further lockdown. 
um, when we do reopen again it's going to be on a limited basis so once we get to the end of the year into 2021 it'll be possible to come in and do some research in person but it will still need a bit of advanced planning as we have to get our documents out well in advance and quarantine them and so on um, however once we actually have people back working in the office again we can always help by photographing or scanning images